Now tourists start here. Coming up on Inside Out, going for gold, Johnny Nelson takes on the triathlon challenge. Now tourists started flocking to Robin Hood's Bay when the railway line made it accessible to all, but the Scarborough to Whitby line fell prey to Dr Beeching's cuts in the 1960s. Now we've found some unique footage that shows the railway in its heyday. It's 21 miles from Scarborough to Whitby on one of the most stunning stretches of the Yorkshire coast. The track here closed in 1965. Today, the trains are just a memory, but I've uncovered evidence on film showing one of Yorkshire's vanished railways, and I'm following its tracks to find out more. So this is Scarborough Station. This is where my journey begins. But if I'd have wanted to catch a train from here to Whitby back then, I'd have had a bit of a walk on. It was a long way to the Whitby platform. Trains left Scarborough Station three minutes late to give passengers more time to get on board. But it was worth the effort. The line took them up the coast past Ravenscar and Robin Hood's Bay. The North Eastern Railway proclaimed its Scarborough Whitby branch as 21 miles of the most picturesque railway in the British Isles. When Dr Beeching announced his plans to close uneconomic railway lines, a young rail worker, Frank Dean, filmed the last days of the Scarborough Whitby Railway. He and his wife Heather didn't know it, but they'd created a unique record of a lost railway. What's it like for you, Frank, watching this after so many years have passed? Oh, it's uh, <laughs> very sentimental, really. And it makes me realise how much time we did spend. This was a well-known view just before you go into Ravenscar Tunnel. Did so, you realise back then how special all this footage would be so many years later? No, it was just a hobby and a project, I think. And how did you feel when you found out it was closing? Well, I felt it was sad, yes, because, uh, uh, you know, particularly for, for rural areas, trains were very, very, uh, very, very important, you know. So 40 years on, Frank, I'm going to make that same journey and follow in your footsteps. You got any advice for me? Well, uh, you need Wellington boots, I think, <laughs> and, uh, and you'll need uh, probably an an anorak to become a true railway enthusiast. <laughs> Scarborough Station always pulled in holiday makers and the Whitby line was a popular route in summer. And this was the start of the line, a tunnel that runs 300 yards underneath the middle of Scarborough. But these days you can't get very far unless you know how to walk through brick walls. And the other end of the tunnel has disappeared. It's part of a supermarket car park now. I'm meeting Robin Lidster, who's going to guide me out of Scarborough. So this place is unrecognisable to how it used to be then? Very much so. It uh, used to be an extremely busy goods yard, opened in 1902. And uh, virtually all the traffic that uh, came into Scarborough uh, came in through this goods yard. So we're literally walking along what once was a track. This used to be the railway line. And in peak summertime, you know, ha what was going on along here? 20 trains a day, uh, scenic excursions, taking people round the North Yorkshire moors, and of course the service trains, which took people from Scarborough up to Whitby or vice versa. The first station north of Scarborough was Scorby. Frank Dean filmed the station, which was demolished in 1974. So it's hard to believe that there was a railway line coming through here, isn't there? Never mind a, a station. Very difficult to believe when you look around and see the modern buildings. And not a trace of it left? Not a trace, except for one interesting detail. And on the corner of the buildings at the top there, you can actually see stonework. Oh, yeah and that is stone that was reclaimed from the original station when it was demolished. 
Next stop, Cloughton. 40 years ago, Frank Dean filmed the building being valued before it was sold off. These days, it's a tea shop. It opened as a railway station in 1885. From what I can gather, it never made a profit. The line never made a profit. They sold it all for £295,000 to the North Eastern Railway, having paid over £650,000 to build it. So in the 1880s, 1890s, it lost over £300,000. And I think it went downhill from there on, really. At the side of his garden, Steve's brought back a little bit of the railway, but this carriage isn't going anywhere. This is amazing. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Now, I think I'm safe to say I'm not particularly into trains, but this is something else, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Lots of people like it. And is it on a railway track? I feel like we're... We are. Yeah. Yes. The, the line had been lifted in 1967, but I dug down, put the track back down again and stood this on it. And it's not just a train. You can actually sleep here. And despite the fact that you've got your bedrooms and your kitchen and your bathroom, you still feel like you're on a train. I'm back on my journey, heading to the highest point on the line. This used to be Ravenscar Station, 600 feet above sea level. Just north of the station, there's a section of the line closed to the public, but I've got special permission to film. Just look how overgrown this whole area is. It's barely accessible on foot, but this is precisely where the old line would have run abandoned more than 40 years ago, but it's still buried somewhere underneath here. And this is where I'm heading, a tunnel which runs under Ravenscar because the local landowner wouldn't give permission for the railway to run through his estate. This is incredible. I'm inside a railway tunnel that hasn't been used for more than 40 years. And just look at it, it's huge. The stones are big and solid. This thing was built to last. Building the line was dangerous work. Seven men died. This tunnel is one of their legacies. North of Ravenscar, heading down to Robin Hood's Bay, this is the most beautiful part of the old line. But now there's a new way of travelling. At Horska Station, you don't get trains anymore. Hello, Keith. Nicola, Hello, nice Nicola. To meet you. Yeah, well, we've got your bike ready, so uh, Great. are we going for a ride down to Robin Hood's Bay? Wonderful. Wow, what a beautiful way to see the Yorkshire coastline, Keith. It certainly is. It's a lovely old railway trail. It was used many years ago by uh, the trains, and now we've got the chance to go on the bikes. It's fantastic views along the coast, all the way between us and down to Scarborough into Whitby. Sea views, lots of really nice trails to uh, ride on with the kids and uh, the enthusiasts can do it as well, yes. And you can still sort of imagine that it was once a railway, can't you? Certainly, you know, as you go along, you see the old stations and the platforms at the side of the trail and it's a nice, easy, flat route to ride on. Sadly, the trains are never coming back. Frank Dean recorded the demolition work, which meant the end of the line for the Scarborough Whitby Railway. There's a lot of history on that line, and a lot of anger, especially in Whitby, because it was a lifeline from the West Riding. The trains might be gone, but the route's still here for people to use and enjoy. And this is the end of my journey, the spectacular Larpool Viaduct. The next stop's Whitby, just over there. And what a way to finish. Now, last year, we put the former world boxing champion Johnny Nelson through the gruelling selection test to join the Paras, and he failed miserably. This year, we thought we'd set him a new challenge to see if he could do a triathlon.